Hi there, welcome to the RPS Project. I'm Richard and today what I've got for you is this beast of a thing. This is a DVD player. For anybody out there who's looking at going monstrosity pile of junk, no, it's a Pioneer. That's all, what was the serial number thing on it? Can't even see. A DV525, DV525 Pioneer DVD player. Look at that, what a monster, man, it's almost as big as the VHS players, only this thing, according to the stamp, was made in 1999, was made in Japan, made in Japan, look, I've even got the remote still, wow, amazing, well, what I'm going to do is have a look inside it, I'm going to open up first, I want to make sure that there's nothing bad on the inside, nothing's gone pop or blown or burn or leaky caps or anything untoward and if it looks all good I'm going to plug the thing in and see if it plays so um, let's have a look on the inside so let's have a look at this box eh? Pioneer, let's start off with the front what do I have on the front here it's uh, Pioneer DV525 on off button, it has a big physical on off button VNR, I'm not sure, something to do with noise reduction maybe or video noise reduction, I don't know. Eject button, fast forward and rewind, stop, pause, play. Um, it's quite a chunky size really. What's on the back? Let's have a quick look at the back of the box. Now hopefully you can see this. What we've got is digital out. Um, not sure what that one is. But it says digital out, optical out control in wow you can have a control in of some sort tv system now this is quite different we've got ntsc pal or auto uh, in the uk we usually have pal um, next one video out we've got audio over here so you could uh, take your left right audio and your video out from those three s video out brilliant um, and your power cable and then for us guys and girls over here in the uh, in Europe and in UK we've got a SCART connector something you don't see in the in the States or um, over in the Far East but that was the main way of connecting a lot of equipment um, when this thing was made and just to show you if you can um, see that 1999 that is um, from that time, so a long time ago, and it really does say um, Japan, Pioneer Electronic Corporation, made in Japan. Let me just pick that up. I'm not lying; it is made in Japan. So hopefully, this should be a nice unit. So there's a few screws on the back. They even give you little arrows that tell you which screws to take out. So. Um, let's take these four screws out on the back here first. Uh, let's get a turbo swap to put them in. Always keep a tub handy for screws. I know people have got all these fancy magnetic trays, haven't they, for holding their screws in these days, but um, I'll just stick with a plastic tub. Difficult. Number three, uh, fourth one out. The other thing about this is the feet that are on here. Look at that. You can, you get decent feet on it. Two big rubbery ones, two big ones on the front. Uh, these little rubbish stick on rubber things you get these days. Um, and I've got um, two on either side. So let's get these out. Drop my screwdrivers. One. And 
to. Just need to screw that away. Put it down and inside we have <sighs> Will you look at that? That is quite nice looking. Actually, it's very nice looking. You know, I'm going to I'm going to zoom in and then move the box around the wrong way so we can um, look at different parts of this. So, first of all, we got the the main tray. That's the um, I can quite see that there's the uh, laser unit and the tray drive and stuff all in there. Um, we've got this board at the back here. This board there's um, appears to be. I'm not sure. I suppose it must be a link board because there's not too many things on there. I have to zoom out again a bit. I think it's more. There are there are a lot of link wires in here. None of the capacitors look bad, they all look really nice. This second board here is for the um, SCART connector, which you wouldn't have on, um, you only get on the European and UK versions. We've got what looks like to be the main control board here. Look that, it's even got its own dedicated chips on there. That is, if I can get it in there. Re-angle this, aren't I? Pioneer, own branded one. There's another one in there that just says Japan, and this one at the back here is a Panasonic. So these are dedicated chips, and actually, even the front board at the front there, like you've got dedicated controller chips. You've got two boards in the front for the um, switches, but that that's. There's a lot of engineering gone into this. Over here we've got the power board. I presume that's uh, a switch mode power supply back from 1999. Very well made. Look at the quality in that. That is, that's the input. That's, um, I've got what you call it now. You've got two coils to, to stop out any interference on the, on the AC line coming in. Why oh, can't I remember what that is? This huge capacitor here for smoothing some windings uh, but th that's a separate board in itself and you just look at it and it's just immaculate you don't see boards like that anymore I mean they're just not like that big clunky physical on off switch which is great with its own board um, Yeah, it's just from visual inspection, there doesn't look to be anything wrong with this unit at all. Um, but of course, the proof will be in in the playing because um, I have to try a, a a DVD in here to see how well it's doing. Let's just have a, a another look. At that power board it's just you just don't see it I mean usually that type of board is like a, a big um, toroidal um, core with uh, a few windings around it two windings why well, can't I remember what that's called now it's gonna annoy me um, if I remember, I'll um, put it up as a caption across the screen. But, but yeah, it's just the layout and the look of it is just brilliant. And that is the power board. And look at it, you've got the output from it isn't big cables, it's, it's a ribbon cable as my, as my output for the, um, for the power for, the, for everything else. So they've used ribbon cables to power everything else up because obviously I presume it doesn't take high voltages. I presume 5 volts and probably 3.3 volt. That's all it's going to be taking. 
but that is just brilliant. I love that, it's just such nice quality in there. And I said, nothing untoward, nothing looks broken. There's no dodgy um, uh, capacitors in there. So um, I'm going to put the lid back on and uh, see if it works. Okay, so I've got the uh, machine um, plugged into the back of the TV using the um, SCART socket, which is uh, great. So set the channel to the right one. Of course, no signal. So if I turn this on, and hopefully, there we go. Pioneer, brilliant. Um, nice blue back screen. No disc, that's what it says. Um, so uh, I suppose, let's have a look at the, well, I suppose setup. Let's see if this remote works. Uh, look at that, setup. I got the setup anyway. Um, audio, audio one. Dolby Digital, well, hey, yeah. Um, audio 2, video, TV screen, it's a 4 3 ratio, uh, with a pan and scan, whatever that means. Video out is RGB. I wonder if I can go to that. Oh, I see, yeah, RGB, video, S video, RGB, so that's what it will be. Um, still picture on auto, on screen display, OSD position, normal, angle indicator, off, don't know, language, all in English because uh, why would I want it in anything else and um, just in case you notice there is a bit of flicker on the screen um, but it's not too bad it's probably the camera showing that up there you go it's everything's there so i suppose what i need to do is to put a dvd in there and see what happens so first of all let's um, open it up see what happens see if this works oh the tray opens oh that's a bit dodgy Try opens and closes. So I wonder if there's some. Um, ah, stayed open this time. I wonder if there's some sort of dirt on a sensor or something within the mechanism. Yeah, I reckon it's a, probably a sensor that's dirty. So as it opens, it for whatever reason decides to close on its own. So I'm just going to put a dodgy DVD in. I'm not going to play it. I'm just going to let it go to menu because obviously copyright I don't want anybody moaning and saying I owe them loads of money just for putting a DVD in um, so I'm just going to put it in and we'll see what the see what the, if it brings up the menu if it actually plays it so um, close glad the remote works at least anyway that's brilliant isn't it usually they're they just they're rubbish they're no good but you know there's a couple of fresh batteries in there and well look at that it's brought up the um, the warnings it's obviously playing I can see it's staying title 2 track 1 and it's it's playing yeah there you go it's definitely um, doing summit search onto the menu brilliant like that play feature um, I'm not going to play it obviously because uh, I don't want to uh, get into trouble with the copyright but yeah it's it's a working system let's press Stop, stop doesn't work, so what do I do now? To just top menu. But this is this is one of those DVDs you put in it, just it this is where you start from. Just have to um eject it. I wonder if it's gonna eject properly. Is it gonna Yeah, yeah that worked. As I expect to go in and out, in and out, in and out several times, but um yeah that's saying to work. Um I've got a DVD here and I must have recorded some onto this, I presume, a very long time ago. It was covered in dust. Let's have a look, see if there's anything on it. And well, it's found out. It says it cannot be played. Well, obviously, there's nothing on there worth watching. So let's um, get that out. 
Oh, and it knocked the tray slightly and it's gone back in. Let's see if I can get that out without it having a funny on me. Wait. Fight with it then. Jeez, you knock that tray slightly, even just slightly, and it's back in. It's got a really dodgy sensor in there. You have to be damn careful. So, am I going to get this out without... This is like, um, if anybody knows the programme, there's a shop till. That's a bit dodgy. I won't name the programme, but anybody who's watched it, you know what I'm talking about. Let's uh, get that out without sending it off. Oh dear. I wonder if there's another DVD in here I can try. Uh, what on earth is this? Wow. Guitar techniques. Wonder what. Uh, look at the state of that. Let's um, throw that in. Yeah, that tray's a bit. Um, how you doing, isn't it? It'll have your fingers off. Compact disc. Yeah, fantastic. You're gonna do anything. Oh, it's a, it's a CD, it's a music one, that bit. It's not doing much else. But the base of it are, this thing is actually working. It's a functional. Let's um, press play then. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, obviously a learning video, isn't it? So it starts off with uh, tune your guitar, I presume. So, um, so can I, um, yeah. Anyway, enough of that. Let's um, flip it over and see what's on the other side. I think this is a double sided disc. And what have I got now? I wonder. DVD, this is DVD. Well, there you go. Look, it's uh, found something in there. And the quality is really quite good, you know. This disc is issued solely in conjunction with the December 2007 issue of Guitar Techniques magazine. Brilliant, there you go. And, uh, yeah, I quite like that. It's, um, quality is not too bad. Nothing to, nothing to moan about. I'm, Effectively, what I've got is a working DVD player from 1999, made in Japan. Um, yeah, what more can I say about it? <laughs> it works. Anyway, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, all comments are welcome. If you've got something like this, let me know about it. So, see you next time.